Okay, so this map is apparently based on some type of food. Uh, and it might even be able to give you some details in the name. Uh, but this is another one from the map pool uh, in the Delicious Cup. And this was a the fifth game in a best of five qualifier for the main event of that tournament with two very good teams. This is a really fun game. I want to talk through it, okay? Um, we have the Argentinian team. We have Lucky Rocks here playing as the flank, uh, playing as the Spanish. The pocket then is Deeker playing as the Tootens. And then the, the other flank here is FedEx playing as the Turks. So they have two gunpowder flanks. They have the ideal setup on a map with a lot of food. As you can see, there's fish here. Uh, you also have cows and then there's there's ostrich and there's rhinos and there's zebra. I'll walk you through it. Um, anyways, they've got amazing setup here for a fifth game to potentially qualify for the event, right? And then here in the teal, we've got Prides uh, teamed alongside Cloud, who's the team captain, playing as the Hindustanis. Sorry, Prides is playing as the Saracens. Uh, Cloud is playing as the Hindustanis. And then the other flank then is Sorakuma, who's playing as the Bohemians. Now, perspective on this team, this is a Taiwanese team. Cloud has been around a really long time. He's a very experienced player. If I were to compare Cloud to a player, he's very much like Doubt. He doesn't have as much speed as a lot of other players do, but he's very strategic. And look at this already. So this map, you don't have gates on your walls, okay? So you actually have to delete your walls, which I hate as a player, but you do. He's already here with a vill. And he's already pre-walled it because there's four pawns here, okay? So this is rather uncommon to be here at this time. But due to the amount of food that you have around the TC, he basically didn't have to have as many villagers uh, working on food. So you look how much he's got on wood already. So he's going to go for the dock, and then he's going to add fishing ships. And as I always say, if your dock is working and your TC is working at the same time, you then have more eco units, which is better for you. Deeker, he would maybe have the same option on his side, but he's actually going to give up his pond to the Spanish player because what players don't want to do is they don't want to have their water contested if they're making heavy food units, which the Conquistador would be. So you'll notice down here that Taiwan, actually, Sorokuma has already walled this. So he's just denied the possibility. Again, just like really interesting strategy. So we will have two players docking for each team, basically. Um, we will have red docking for Argentina. And we will have purple docking. So both flank players. And then this flank just says, I'm not going to fish at all. And trust me when I say, this strategy is pretty insane. Now... Uh, man, I have so much I want to talk about here. I'm going to have to actually save some points. But let me just talk through some other aspects. So in order to take wood, you have to actually delete some of your walls as well. So you'll notice players have done that. Another interesting part of this map. Um, and then there's occasional goats and sheep that are on the outside that you could find. I'm sure Cloud has maybe found one. There's not a lot. Like here. Here's some extra food. Um... Oh, in the middle, you have uh, gold and you have fish. You can see it's both, right? So if you make a mill there, you're taking fish. If you make a mining camp, you're taking gold. And there's way more gold in the middle than there is anywhere else. There is still gold sprinkled on the outside, though. It's interesting, right? It's really interesting. And, and the thing that was so fun for me playing in a qualifier was, like, just the toying around with strategies trying out different strats, trying to download games from other people, and we ultimately watch this one to, to practice, to see what they're doing. Um, and it it is just going to produce some great games. The top teams that were already invited to this event, they have the luxury of just seeing everyone else's meta and getting opin giving opinions on it. Um, a lot of these tricks they may end up using, but... Ultimately, man, it's like in those qualifiers where the real crazy strats are born. And there's just a lot more mystery going into it. We don't know what people are going to do. What is our plan? Okay. So, I want to give some funny perspective on that. Okay? I had watched the previous round in the best of three where Taiwan played. Okay? Taiwan's the right team. And the strategy that they are about to do here was the strategy that they did in that first round. 
and I guarantee you that Argentina did their homework, okay? So Argentina, like, not only are you going to be slightly blown away by the strategy we're about to see and see how cool it is, but Argentina kind of knew, and they developed a strategy to counter it, okay? Typically, what you're going to have is you're always going to have the Turks, because their gunpowder is so good, they're going to go fast castle, into a castle, into gunpowder, and then you're going to have Spanish do the same. And then the pocket players normally just adds a lot of eco. Okay. But they're like Argentina knows we need a little bit more in the middle because some crazy stuff is happening. Watch Cloud here. Okay. So Cloud is already up to feudal. He's making his market and his blacksmith. Look at how much leftover food he has. And then look at his resources right now. This guy has a very clean build order and he's going to be able to click up to the next stage here boom there he goes now when you're thinking hindustanis you're thinking cheaper villagers and you're thinking camels that's your main thought so there he is notice his flank is already on the way to castlage the other flank already on the way to castlage these guys have some crazy uptimes all because of just changing the order in which they collect things right some timings can be really important on this map. Cloud leaves his base. And you have to delete a wall, so he remakes it. He does not have loom. That's so freaking risky, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have an archer range for the Saracen player. He's making archers on a map with stone walls. And Cloud runs forward. He sees red. He signals it. We don't know exactly what he's saying, but he's like, hey. Target acquired, right? Now, look at this. We do not have any stone being mined from FedEx. I think it's... I, I haven't asked them. I should reach out and maybe ask them. But I believe that they're doing this, guys, because they know of what is to come. And I don't want to completely spoil what's to come. You're going to find out what's to come, and you're going to see how them knowing this was coming was kind of helpful for them. But yes, and we also have a stable here from Deeker. So he's ready to support with some knights. Not common at all. Typically, you have the flanks wait for their castles to go up. And then the player who's in the middle position just adds a bunch of town centers and booms. Cloud has his Vils walled in. He goes for a siege workshop. And this is close to these walls, right? Right up against these walls. In the middle. FedEx has another scout. Interestingly enough, by the way, there's like random, there's Joan the Maid. Don't attack them. They will attack back. The Queens don't attack back, by the way. There are some random Gaia units. There's Princess Yodit. But, um, okay. There's just like a lot of movement out here. And what did Cloud just do? Let me go back. Cloud senses this. He realizes, oh, crap. And he takes FedEx away from it, right? So FedEx and his team, I think they know what could come from watching the recorded games because they would have seen the siege workshop but they didn't see it right away and now they see it and look we have we have freaking armored elephants man we've got armored elephants from cloud now the coolest thing about this to me is not just the armored elephants it's not just the fact that we have crossbows it's not then the fact that fedex gets light cap for free with turks and they're actually good against archers blah 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 it's the fact that this is a build where you can also have a lot of eco Cloud's going for a town center here and a town center here as well. Sorry, we continue. Um, on this flank, we've got uh, Spanish going for a castle. Up against a player going for a bunch of monks towards the middle. And FedEx has some elephants knocking at his door right now. But because of the homework, the like have showing up is just going to work brilliantly here. It's going to slow it down. You also have the knight coming in. And they were expecting Janissaries. They were expecting a castle. They were expecting no resistance yet. They were even thinking they could deny the castle. And all of a sudden, Teal's push, which is very aggressive and very all-in, is kind of being stopped dead in its tracks right now. Remember, he has no fish. He doesn't have a lot of farms. This army, this whole strat is designed to take one player out of the game. And even the poor elephants have to retreat now. So that's brutal, right? That, that is absolutely brutal. But there is a sacrifice to this. And the sacrifice to doing this is that your uh, pocket player, he's 
a little later to some of the things he might have done otherwise. And Cloud still got some fish, which Yellow does not. He still got two town centers, so that that's all good. Meanwhile, on this side, Blue notices that there's a castle for Lucky Rocks. I should mention, he's going for monks when there's Light Cav on the field. He's going for monks when Teutons are on the enemy team. You resist conversion with Teutons. Going for this many monks... It feels like a nightmare scenario, considering what has transpired thus far. Okay, so some of the elephants went down. Oh, no, they didn't. They're still here. Okay, shout out to them. There's more elephants. You would think that they would just stop with elephants, right? I feel like any sane man would. Okay, they're killing Joan the Maid. That's that's just so horrible. How dare you, Argentina? Um, We've got a TC on this gold here from Blue. And he's really keeping a close eye on things here. He's got Town Watch. He can see these things coming in from a mile away. And he needs to start the con those conversions early. And I think that in this position, FedEx just assumed, okay, they're going to give up on the push now. But nope. There's crossbows here all of a sudden. And FedEx was just told, hey, there's monks. Bring the light calf. But all of a sudden, there's elephants. More elephants than before. And crossbowmen headed in towards FedEx's eco. However, the light cap coming this way, helping out hugely. It's going to kill most of the monks. Again, it's like one of the worst situations to be making this many monks. Up against Teutons and up against light cap. And it's just getting, the monk play is just getting destroyed. So, I don't know how these teams communicate. But Sorokuma might be saying something along the lines of, we have to do damage now. Right? Makes sense. You got to do damage quick because... This whole thing hasn't been playing out nicely. TC was denied too. So here we go. Big moment in this game. We've got four elephants. <laughs> They're ready to, to siege. They've been healed up by the monks, funnily enough. And then we've got the crossbows here from Teal. And all three armies are here from Argentina. And they're here to deny this. And it feels like they should have enough, right? They've got so much army. So here we go. This does mean that Sorokuma is alone in the south of the map or the middle of the map. But man, the Siege Elephants, again, not cutting it. The combination of Light Cav, Knights, Conquistadors getting some excellent value here. I get really impressed with Argentina's preparation to know that this was coming and just prepare for it. It was excellent. And Blue's still trying to mass some monks here in the middle, trying to get relics back to his base. He's already got one. He'll have a couple in a second. Now, where things get interesting is when you look at the the position for the pocket players. So, you look at uh, green, and then you look at yellow here. And while Argentina's cleared this, and they've got a really good army right now, and they should probably even pounce on this army, you still have a pretty big economy for Cloud. And Cloud's Hindustanis and his Campbells are very strong. Uh, they attack faster, right? The Campbells are good against mounted units. And camels could be helpful against all the units that are out here right now. But a big moment as we have a forward castle for blue. And again, a nightmare scenario is the like have kill the monks. Or some of the monks anyways. And deny this castle. I'm thinking, oh my god. What? They predicted our strat. Oh no. Monks won't work. We'll try. There you go. Go ahead and try, old men. But get back into that town center. This town center is going to be a goner soon. All of this could die. It's so devastating, this damage that they're taking. The economy's close, but it's not going to be close. As the villagers run away. So many monks have had to die. I just love how Argentina did their homework and prepped the strat to stop this. It's so cool, man. This whole game has been really interesting. Now, they don't have any security on the gold in the middle. And T was able to sneak through here over to FedEx's base. Because FedEx is distracted over there. So that's a good job from Teal to continually get some damage in. Also, we have Conquistadors on the shoreline, too. I mean, Argentina really did so many good things right. Sitting on the shoreline there is so nice. We've got Light Cav and Knights going for this next town center. Teal's going to get cleared up here. FedEx still has an eco lead over him. But we do have Camels being masked here from Cloud. And he's kind of like the comeback, the comeback mechanic for the team. He's the comeback condition 
Oh, man. Do you even want to open this gate? No, it's been locked. So, oh, no. You can't even get saved. Your people don't care about you. They care about themselves more than you. Devastating losses. Again, just horrible to go three monasteries against these Sifts. It's just bad. Okay, finally, conversions happen. But the thing I'll say about Taiwan, they just keep coming. <laughs> like, Teal just said, okay, I'll add more ranges. I'll add more crossbows. And all of a sudden, it, it, Taiwan's a little annoyed about the whole TC situation from Blue. He's like, we don't like the fact that you took out our buddy's TC. We're going to take out your TC. And think about this. Stable units for Hindustanis. Uh, it's actually mounted units. Additional bonus damage against buildings. Or is it mounted units? I'm not sure if it affects the armored elephants. I think the armored elephants are already just good against buildings. Um, crossbowmen for Saracen. Do more damage against buildings. And you've got camels now against light calf. Uh, camels will win there against knights. Camels will win there. It's really just the conquistadors that would be the unit that's tough to stop. But if the camels engage against that, if the camels get hits on these things, they're still doing tons of bonus damage. So Argentina has shot ahead in the eco because of all the damage they've done. But now blue gets to rest. He gets to focus on expanding again because of this massive, massive, massive ball of army here. This is insane. The TC's down. FedEx is, is probably like, uh, we need more support. Now, Tootons do have extra melee armor. And full armor is in, so that's kind of nice. But it's really hard to know what to do in this situation. Because if you make pikemen, because you're scared of the camels, the crossbow number is high enough to kill the pikes. There's a reason why, like, camel crossbow or, like, knight crossbow is strong. Because anything you can think of to add in there, it's going to have a weakness. And this is just a ridiculous fight. So many upgrades for both players. The army counts are insane. But here we go. We've got monks trying to get conversions. They probably will get conversions. They also will heal. And you can notice that the camels are just wrecking everything, guys. And these elephants are still taking out the town center. There's no more knights for yellow. Imperial Age is on the way for teal and for green. And... For as good as the start was, keep in mind, this was a game five. You win, you qualify for the main event. Like, really important to these teams. For as good as the start was for Argentina, everything's falling apart. And Blue had even converted Conquistadors at some point that I completely missed. And he was kind of in here denying a castle temporarily. I love how Blue keeps making monks. This guy is just like, if it doesn't work the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, or maybe the... The fifth time, it will work the sixth time. Props to him as well, though, because he's got... He's rebounded economically. We'll say that. Crazy scenes. As the army count is now 85 for Taiwan and just 20 for Argentina. So you do have yellow imping. But it's just one player imping. FedEx is like... Feels like he's, he's going to die. Right? Like, his TCs are still getting shredded. He needs immediate help. The player who you would now need more support from would be Purple. And Purple has been trying his best, but he can't get, go through the middle because there's TCs and castles everywhere. And even Blue is on the way to the Imperial Age, currently. Wild game, right? This insane game. And I feel bad for FedEx because I don't know what you do in this situation. You hope that your teammate has more. But this strategy went from completely unconvincing... So, oh my god, it's actually working in a second. And I think the key was... It was the uh, consistent army production from Teal after the early losses. Like, the fact that he didn't try and opt for economy much. And the fact that they just... They kept diving for TCs. They just kept moving. Blue still making monks. <laughs> like a madman. Uh, some of the support from Taiwan. Notice the conversation here. They're all bringing in everything together here. Because this is already enough. We have Heavy Camel on the way for Cloud, whose eco has been untouched this entire game based on how this strategy goes. You've got food and you've got gold in the middle. And, um... Well... It's just not looking good for Argentina. You've got Lucky Rocks on the way to Imp. He does have Conquistadors that he could potentially upgrade. But again, he'll be up against Arbalest, he'll be up against Monks, and he'll be up against the Camels, because FedEx isn't here to help. 
You do have Deeker, though, with a big old ball of Tutan Cavalier. So you just kind of hope that if these two can combine together, they can kill this. That's the Cavalier stable. Are you kidding me? Oh, no way. Oh, jeez. He's not going to realize that either. It's not something you really think about. You're like, oh my god, we're going to lose this game. I need Cavalier right now. You just click it, and then you worry about doing other things. Oh, we lost the Cavalier upgrade in the stable. Bohemians have the stables now. Still, the push only gets worse against FedEx. But they're doing the right thing not to save FedEx. Because like, what value does FedEx bring to the table right now? FedEx is a distraction, essentially. And they see an engagement here. Because the Arbs and the Camels aren't together anymore. So they're going to try and take the fight. But guys, look at all the army, man. There's just so much army. For, for Taiwan. It's insane. Beautiful fight here, though. That was a mistake. You got to keep the Camels with the Arbs. That was a big clear up. But the camels that are heavy camels that attack faster, they're soon going to be Imperial camels. Which will make matters even so much worse. The camels already seem like the unit to beat. A unit that maybe can't be stopped. And it's still 11 monks for blue. He'll have 12 range, so he can realistically po probably get some conversions now. And uh, we're going to see siege from blue. Like, how is Yellow supposed to make all the army that he needs and also siege down all these castles? There's so much, so many fortifications in this middle gold area right now. For the long term, they were starting to wall off the corner, which is nice because you could maybe, you know, secure some trade. Those are things that are really smart for Purple to be doing. But it's just that army count. And not just army count, army type, as we've discussed, right? Just the camels alone really seem like a tough unit to stop. I don't know a lot about this Prides player, Sorokuma. He hasn't played a lot of 1v1s the last year or two, but in 2020, he was like... I would have put him in my top five of, of like, up-and-coming talents. The guy who was performing insanely well, I think he was around 20 years old at that time. I haven't seen too much of him. Cloud's always around. Prides, I'm not too sure on. Maybe I gotta keep an eye on the guy, but he has played well. 34 ARBs, always more production buildings, always more units, and Taiwan's just together. Whatever practice they, they went for for this has truly paid off here. And if you're feeling like there's no way back right now for Argentina, you're not too far off course. This is looking rough. And as someone who lost in Game 5 on this map in a qualifier, I can tell you, it's not a fun feeling to sit there and just watch you... I don't think it matters what map it is, but you kind of know for a while, you're trying your best, and then things slowly get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and you obviously want to make sure that when you do call it, if you call it, the game is already over. You do not want to early GG at this stage of the series. I, It's 50 army for Cloud. It's 42 army for Prides. That alone is enough to win this game. And then Blue's got random Monks and Trebs. Pretty insane. Now, I am seeing markets here from Cloud. So it doesn't look like Taiwan have realized that there's walls here. They're maybe starting to think about it. We're going to see a gate and maybe some outposts. But they have all the gold towards the middle right now. So they don't really even need to, to really consider that at this point in time. But when you're ahead, you want to stay ahead. And a way to stay ahead is to add trade. They are up against Spanish, and Spanish have a trade bonus. So the Argentinians would, would have the best long-term gold income option with trade. I've seen camels everywhere destroying buildings. Still, like, the total population is not that crazy. It is... Look, Teal just got Loom, by the way. It's not that crazy. It's just like an 80 or 70 population lead for the winning team. But it's just it's still this slow snowball that can't be stopped. They're going to have one one attempt. One big attempt to maybe clear this. And it's going to be with Paladin from Tutans. Again, hoping that the melee armor could do something even up against the Camels. It's also a leak Conquistador. They've got full upgrades, right? That they're, so they are maxed out here in a second. They have to stop it here. 
Remember though, Bohemian Halbs do have addition, do additional bonus damage. Blue doesn't have many upgrades, but he does have some Halbs mixed in there. It's just a lot of bonus damage units, you know? And you, as a player, you're like, you don't want to take a losing fight, but at a certain point, you just have to take the fight. Because if you lose more rounds, you, you're dead. Sending resources back and forth to each other, both teams trying to help. I, I can't wait to see how many conversions Blue got in this game. <laughs> like, he's actually getting so many conversions. And yeah, here's their best engagement, because the, the, the camel numbers were kind of behind the arbs. Big fight here, but at this stage, guys, there's just army everywhere else as well that they've got. They're gonna have to worry about, and the paladins just get wrecked. Just got wrecked. <clears throat> it's a cool strat. It's a strategy that the losing team expected to. Sorry, I couldn't add the perspective to it. Um, the, when they used this strategy before, the game wasn't as competitive, let's put it that way. So it wasn't as good a cast. And yeah, uh, Taiwan ended up qualifying, winning 3-2 in a series because of that strat. I thought it was so cool, man. Like, the whole build order was cool. The early dock from the pocket, the teamwork with the, you know, with the elephants and then the archers. He was basically all in for a great period of time there. He's got no fish. He's not expanding on town centers. Just army, 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 army. And the fact that, like, Argentina did a really good job at expecting it, too. Like, we watched this as a team, and we were saying, like, how did, like, where did things go wrong for Argentina? And the consensus was they needed an answer for Camel. But, like, the answer for Camel should be there with gunpowder. The problem is, it's like, if you try and go for gunpowder, you might get your castle denied. <laughs> or you're not going to have army as quickly. The early clear-up that you got with the light cap was very good. You're not going to have that if you try and go for gunpowder. Now, the Conquistadors maybe could have looped around or something. It's just really tricky. Anyways, uh, kind of a sad tale. Um, remember that time where I said we were in a qualifier and we were up against Team Canada in the qualifier and uh, we lost our Series 3-2? Well, we actually... I knew that our team would need a couple strategies saved, a couple strategies to, to beat Slam and Chris and Co. because they're so such good experienced pros. We tried a similar thing, and we got smashed. It didn't work for us. But in this game, it worked, which made a really cool video, so that's cool. Um, and yeah, so uh, GG to them. Congratulations to Taiwan, and let me know what you think about the map. This tournament's going to produce some really fun games. I really like the maps. Um, not normally the biggest arena fan, but the fact that there's so many funky builds you can do, and so many options, like... If you ever know my maps or maps that I've created, I really like maps with options. So it's not you must do this. It's you can do that. But if you don't, you can do this or that or some other thing too. Um, anyways, it was a good one. The Conks clearly did well. Two to one KD. But uh, <laughs> actually, how many conversions? Blue had 30 conversions, people. <laughs> um, I, I don't think that was worth it. But yeah, the unfortunately the light cab and the knights were not enough against the camels and those crossbowmen from Cloud and Prides on that northern side.